Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Clifton Park Center Baptist Church. It's good to see everyone here this morning and for those joining us online. I want to welcome you as well. Let us come into the house of the Lord wherever we're at this morning, but let us uh, hear from the Lord this morning that we may go from here different from how we came in and ready to face a new week. And let us and let us fellowship with one another, building one another up, strengthening one another during this time. So I want to welcome you here, and I want to welcome you online as well. Uh, first thing this morning, we have a lot of announcements, so just hang on. Here we go. First of all, when you drove in, did you notice anything different with the park? Yes. It's been paved. You can drive on it now. They put the lines on. It is. Uh, and they even put yellow. They even put painted the, the curved yellow. So, yeah. Right on the board. So, and the steps. Yes. And the steps. Anything else? It looks good. So, three, three late. It looks really good. So, um, the parking lot is done. Praise God. Because the parking lot was drying last week, and because it took a little longer due to rain, um, we were not many of us were in worship last week, not many met in person. So we didn't get much of a fellowship offering in any. So uh Dick Kruger did put the plate out in the hall this morning. If you would, if you feel so led to give to the fellowship offering, you may do so today. Of course, that goes to members of our congregation who find themselves in times of need. If you go upstairs to Fellowship Hall, you're going to notice something else different. Go into the kitchen. Uh, I'll just tell you right now so you know where to look. We have new faucets. I guess they're the high faucet, so they're easier to, uh, to wash dishes with. So those have been put in. Thank you to Gary and Jeff for that installation. Um, the church office will be closed tomorrow for Columbus Day. Uh, Dennis and I are taking Monday off anyway now, and we have a substitute administrative assistant, Priscilla, and she'll be taking the day. So the office will be closed tomorrow for Columbus Day. Tuesday, 7 p.m., the Bell Bible Study with Pastor Bruce. Um, Wednesday. 9.30 a.m., the Peacemakers are meeting, followed by the Women's Ministry meeting, Church Council meeting, and Fellowship Hall will be that night at 7 p.m. Busy day Wednesday. And uh, the Alzheimer's support group will meet on Thursday. Um, that was to make an announcement on the Fall Festival in just a moment. A couple other things. Um, we are going to be serving a meal at the Back Stretch Ministry at the Saratoga Racetrack. We do this every year. Um, it's part of the track chaplaincy that is at Saratoga. Churches take turns cooking and bringing service. So we're going to be cooking a meal and providing a worship service in both Spanish and English. Um, so that is October 16th. If you'd like to join us, please do so. See that or see uh, me about anything um, that you may be able to provide. One other. Um, Happy announcement, our administrative assistant, Beth Schultz, and her husband, uh, Pastor John Schultz of Faith, uh, of Faith Church, just had their fourth baby. They just had a baby girl named Lilia Joy, uh, weighing nine pounds, eight ounces, 21 inches long. And she is a beautiful baby girl. Uh, they have three boys, and so now they have a girl. So congratulations to Beth and John on the <coughs> baby, uh, born on, on October 3rd. Demers, you wanted to make a couple well, of Well, following up on Beth and John, uh, we would like to shower them with some uh, love and well wishes. So we thought that uh, for the next three Sundays, we will also put a basket across the, the hall there on the small table so that we can put cards with uh, some gift cards or some check or some cash, whatever you want to uh, give to them. But just to let them know that we are so happy for them and we rejoice with them in this moment of, of joy in their lives and we are here to support them as well. So uh, we'll be, uh, again, putting a basket on the, on the hall across, across from the sanctuary. In terms of the cooking for the back stretch, we're going to gather on Monday, October the 16th, 
And uh, we would like to be here like at 9 30. I think that's a good time when we are not 9 30. Uh, so if I could have maybe three or four volunteers in the kitchen that day, I would really appreciate that so that we can do the press and, and cook what we need to cook. And then that night, uh, we will take it up to the back stretch. Um, also, I know that some cannot come to uh, cook, but if you would like to come serve, we also need the volunteers later in the evening. Uh, the dinner is at 5.30 at the distribution hall. If you need directions or you need a map available, but for those of you who have been there, but even if um, you can just come and, and be part and, and explore this experience of being there with them. Uh, if you can volunteer to serve the dinner, great. We need three or four people too. If not, just come and, and eat with everybody and then worship. Worship will be at six o'clock. And uh, I think it's a wonderful experience of uh, coming together as God's people and, and worshiping together. So everybody's invited. In terms of the fall festival, as of right now, it is still next time. If we need to cancel due to weather, I know in the forecast we have rain now. So I need to have a conversation with the Pony people. Um, because, of course, everything has been announced in the newspaper, on Facebook, in the community. So it's hard to change it. But if we do have to change it, we will change it. And then we will let you know. Okay? We will let you know this week. Uh, however, the need still remains. We need some people to help out with crafts, some people to help out with games on the lawn, and then I really do need volunteers to cook chili and chow. We need more chili and more chow. So if you could please sign up by the church entrance today by the foyer, and then we'll have a competition for best chili, best chow. Uh, it is a fun time for the community and for us and for the preschool family. So it's an important time to come together. So again, if it is canceled and rescheduled, I will I will let you know. We will let you know. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other announcements this morning? <laughs> yes, Joyce. There is no women or peace teachers on Wednesday. It's just yeah, I was surprised it was both. Okay. <laughs> I was just okay. So just the women's um just the women's ministry meeting on Wednesday. No peace makers. Let us, let us come to the Lord in worship. Please join me in the responsive call to worship, which is based on Psalm 80. Shout for joy to God in all the earth. Sing to the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Come and hear what God has done. His awesome deeds are many Come and hear, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely risen and heard from my prayer. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his love from me. Please stand if you're able to sing our praise songs. We come into God's house this morning on a slightly overcast day, yet we know when we are in his presence. We are in the light. The light of his love shines around us as we lift our voices together. Shine, shine. the light of your love is shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Let us breathe, I will prove you now, bring us. 
The Old Testament reading comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 1 through 11. Hear the word of the Lord. While Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the guard, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. This is what the Lord says, he who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says about the house and the city and the royal palaces of Judah that have been torn down to be used against the siege ramps and the sword in the fight with the Babylonians. They will be filled with my anger and wrath. I will have the city because of all its wickedness. Nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to it. I will heal my people and will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. I will bring Judah and Israel back from captivity and will rebuild them as they were before. I will cleanse them from... From all the sin they have committed against me and will forgive all their sin of rebellion against me. Then this city will bring me renown, joy, praise, and honor before all nations on earth that hear of all the good things I do for it. And they will be in awe and will tremble at the abundant prosperity and peace I provide for it. This is what the Lord says, you say, about this place. It is a desolate waste 
without men or animals, yet in the towns of Judah, in the streets of Jerusalem, that are deserted, inhabited by neither men nor animals, there will be heard once more the sound of joy and gladness, the voices of bride and bridegroom, and the voices of those who bring thank offerings to the house of the Lord, saying, Give thanks to the Lord Almighty, for the Lord is good. His love endures forever. For I restore the fortunes of the land as they were before, says the Lord. May the Lord bless the reading of the scripture to our understanding. Let us stand, if you're able to sing, I will praise hymn number 425 in the garden. church, Lord, to be used according to your will, to reach out, to share the good news of your son, Jesus Christ, who brought us salvation through his death on the cross and resurrection from the grave, and Lord, to reach out to those in need. We pray, Lord, that you will speak to us, Lord, that we will hear from you as we seek to be good stewards of what's been entrusted to us, that, Lord, that and you will provide for us as we continue in the mission to which we pray, Lord, a blessing upon those who receive, Lord, that they may also experience the good news through your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, Damaris will come forward with a children's moment. Sometimes we are really, really good at asking 
and we can be very persistent at asking. And we go to our Heavenly Father and say, Lord, Father, I really need this. So I really need this, Lord. Will you, will you please make this happen? Will you please open that door? Will you please give me this which I need? And sometimes we can be very uh, persevering in asking, just like little kids a lot of times. Mom and Dad, can I have this? Can I have this? Can I have this? And um, sometimes kids are so persevering at this and make the parents so tired. The parents just give in and say, oh, okay, fine. You know, let's go and we'll get this. Uh, there's a story in the Bible about this woman, this woman who was a, a widow, a persistent widow, who really needed something <coughs> and went on and asked and asked. And uh, the man of the house got so tired that finally gave her something so that she would go away. But that's not how our father deals with us. When we need something, when we want something that is really good for us, he is a good father. And because he is a good father, he gives it to us out of love. Not so that we will leave him alone, but out of love. Because he wants to bless our lives. He wants to give us what is good. He wants to give us those blessings that he has in store for us. And at the right time, at the perfect time, he gives them to us. And uh, the story of the persistent widow, I think, reminds us of two important things. Go before the Heavenly Father. Present what you need before the Heavenly Father. But know that the Heavenly Father's heart wants to give you what is good for you. Not so that you stop asking, but so that you rejoice in the love that he has for you and the blessings he has for you. So let us remember that. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, this morning we pray, O oh God, that you remind us of this truth, that you love us, Lord, and that everything that you want for us is good. For oh God, help us to have that relationship of trust with you, a relationship through which we can come before you and ask you, O oh God, ask you for the things that we do need. Ask you for the things, Lord, that we do want. But help us to remember, Lord, that you only want what is good for us. And that you know so much better than we do, Lord. That sometimes, Lord, you will not give us what we thought we needed, what we thought we wanted. Because that is really not good for us. But remind us, Lord, that you rejoice in us coming before you and just asking you, just like kids ask their father and mother, Lord, that you rejoice in giving what is good to your children. You don't want us to just go away. You want us, Lord, to receive what's good for us because you love us. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Don Maurice. The New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. The word of the Lord. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, 
I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. The Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. How he comes, will he find faith on the earth? May Lord bless the reading of the scripture to our understanding. Anything worth having is worth fighting for, especially the faith. And nothing worth having comes easy, including the faith. Maybe say, well, wait a minute. What does that mean? The key is anything worth having. Worth having is the key. Is Jesus worth having? I hope your answer is yes. And it's certainly worth fighting for. And you say, well, wait a minute, but doesn't faith come easy? Jesus said, whosoever believes will have eternal life. Jesus said, come to me, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. But we also must pick up the cross. What we have to put behind us in order to follow Christ is a sacrifice, and what we may face going forward because of our faith is also a sacrifice, and yet we must persevere in our faith. Anything worth having, we must persevere. We persevere on our jobs, we persevere with our hobbies, our interests, do we persevere enough in our faith? Do we give up too easily on our faith? It doesn't go just the way we expect. Do we just get frustrated and give up? If we persevere in our faith and we put God first in all things, and then all these things shall be added unto us. The passage we read this morning raises a few questions, I can imagine, and you may have had some of these questions, all of these questions, you may have more questions. But I think some common questions that come up as you read this passage about the persistent widow is, why does Jesus compare God the Father with an unjust judge? We'll get to that. Why is Jesus comparing God to a judge who doesn't care? Another Thing that may come up in your mind. The Bible says to ask for anything and it will be given to you. Why hasn't that happened for me? Why do I have to persist in prayer? If God knows all things, is the Alpha and the Omega. Why do I have to persist in prayer? And if I persist and don't get an answer, does that mean I lack faith? I think we've all asked these questions. I want to go over the passage, and as we go over it, we'll look at some of these questions and hopefully find some answers and seek understanding. Jesus calls us to persevere in prayer. Jesus promises that God will do his part. So Jesus tells us to persist, but also promises that God's going to do his part. In the passage that we looked at, there are two, there are two people. There's an unjust judge. The unjust judge doesn't fear God. And the unjust judge doesn't care about humanity. In other words, if the judge doesn't fear God, the judge probably has no conscience. The judge doesn't care about other people. So this judge doesn't care about his reputation. I mean, who knows? Maybe this judge is a sociopath. Maybe this judge is just a narcissist. We really don't know. We... But this is a judge who just doesn't care about God, doesn't care about people, doesn't care what anybody thinks, probably doesn't have a strong moral compass. 
And there's a widow. And she's pleading with this judge to give her justice against her adversary. And she persists. She keeps going to the judge. And she doesn't give up. And for some time, this judge refuses her plea. So Jesus says she continues going to the judge. It's not spelt right out, but I think the theater of the mind can fill this in a little bit. I don't think she was just making, just keeping her core, her core appointments and showing up on the correct day and standing before the judge in his robe, right? She was probably knocking on his door at night, intentionally running into him at the market, wherever she could, and just continued to beg and to plead with him. We don't know who her adversary was. We don't know the nature of the crimes. Widows were often the victims of crimes in those days. They were seen as vulnerable. He may have been stalking her, tormenting her. He may have been robbing her of what she had. And she took a chance to go to that judge. Going so many times. We think about kids when they want something, and they ask, and they ask, and they ask. They're taking a chance. They're hoping you're going to break down and say yes. But mom and dad could get angry, too. The kids kind of have to assess this. At what point are they going to lose it? Because that's probably when, oh, when I'll stop, right? The judge could have gotten angry with her. The judge could have brought a sentence against him. I can imagine he could have. He keeps, she, but she persisted because she needed to. She needed justice against this adversary. And she took that chance and kept going to the judge. Okay, I'm going to confess a guilty pleasure here. On Netflix, I finally broke down and watched that um, mini docuseries in that Indiana about Anna Sorokin, mm -hmm. the fake German heiress who ended up um, scamming New York society and New York bankers out of $250,000. Um, it kept popping up as something you may want to watch. I don't know what it was connected to that I may have seen otherwise, but Finally, I said, fine, I'll watch an episode. Well, I said, why not? Right? So this young lady with nothing convinces high society to give her money, and she convinces banks. And she's charged with defrauding um, banks and people of $250,000. Now, she was right on the brink of getting tens of millions of dollars. Had that happened, who knows where she'd be now. But she was, um, she was arrested and put on trial. There was one young woman, she was not society, she was an editor for Vanity Fair. And this young woman um, stole $62,000 from her. And she wasn't getting back. But she persisted. She went to the, to the police, she went to the DA, and both the New York City police and the DA said, we're dealing with homicides, we're dealing with rapes, we're dealing with domestic violence, we're dealing with violent crimes here. Your stolen money is isn't our top priority. But she persisted and she wasn't alone. And eventually, I don't think I don't think the girl was found guilty, the young lady was found guilty for stealing from her, but she was from others. Eventually justice was brought on this young man. But the first thing this <coughs> this editor named Rachel kept hearing was, your problems aren't big enough for us. We've got bigger issues on them. Do we ever feel as though our problems aren't big enough for God? Do we ever feel like we can't go to God with something because it's not big enough? And I've struggled with this. And in fact, it, it's probably something I've struggled with with quite a bit. Then one day I realized if the Holy Spirit lives within us, 
then God's a lot closer than we often realize. And if the Holy Spirit lives within us, then God cares a lot for us. But are our needs big enough for God? Sometimes we need to put things in perspective. But sometimes that perspective isn't exactly the, maybe the way we've always gone about it, but we need to change our entire point of view. Jesus teaches us to persist in prayer. Earlier in Luke 11 and also in Matthew 7, um, Jesus talks about, in, in Luke 11, Jesus talks about uh, the man who goes to his friend at night and asks for loaves of bread because company's coming and he has, to, he has to provide for them, he has to entertain. And the person says, are you kidding me? I've already gone to bed, the kids are in bed. Come on, go away. But he persists, and finally the person says, here's the bread. It's similar to the persistent with, right? Jesus encourages us to persist in prayer with God. Are we ever exhausted from prayer? We've all been there. We've persisted. We're not finding our answer. That's what fellowship is for. And when I see everything going, I know sometimes people, you can't make it or you might want to watch a service later. I fully understand that. We have the technology now that we can come to you in your living room and we fully support this. But when we completely separate ourselves from fellowship, then we don't have that interaction with each other. There are times when we can't make it to church, and sometimes we can't for long periods of time. And I'm glad that we're able to meet people where they're at, in their living rooms, at home, um, wherever they may be. But when we don't have fellowship with one another, something gets lost. Sometimes we just need to pray for somebody else. Um, I had a friend who was praying something very important, and she was she was exhausted. And I said, I'll tell you what. Yeah, Maurice and I will pray for you, and you just go on doing what you're doing. Eventually, God did answer her prayer. But we need that fellowship. Sometimes we need to pray for one another. But you know what else? Not only we relate with one another, but God. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. When we don't know what to say, the Holy Spirit can pray for us. So the Trinity is praying for us. And the Holy Spirit is within us. We have the fellowship praying for us. All of a sudden we start to shift our perspective on answered prayer. And on top of that, we're encouraged to persist. Does God, so, okay, we're praying, we don't have an answer, does God give us whatever we ask for? Kind of says that if you read it right, ask whatever and I will give it to you. But when we step back for a moment, we can see the full, the full meaning of these passages. First of all, if God gave us whatever we asked for, we'd have a very different world, a world to live in, very different, <clears throat> and probably not for the better. You know, God is a loving God, and sometimes God knows, sometimes God knows what we need, just like if a parent gave everything, right? But we ask God, what does it mean? Ask whatever, and I will give it to you. If you look at these passages closely, Jesus is talking about one of two things. In some passages, Jesus is talking about giving the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who indwells in us, the Holy Spirit who intercedes for us, the Holy Spirit who guides us. So Jesus is saying, ask for the Holy Spirit in my name, and I will give it to you. Other times, and this is one of the examples, Jesus is talking about deliverance from evil. Ask, I will give to you. 
who is our worst adversary? The last time we met for adult Sunday school, we had it, we looked at that in chapter two of the series that we're doing. I wasn't sure how it was going to go because it's not a topic that I discuss a lot. The that um, the enemy, the devil. Who is our worst adversary? We know who our worst adversary is. Are we praying for deliverance from evil? We have to be very careful not to pull the Flip Wilson comedy routine. Remember, the devil made me do it, right? Keep the devil around because then I have someone to blame. But to resist evil and to pray for deliverance from evil. So when Jesus says to pray to me, to ask for the Holy Spirit and deliverance from evil, that I will give it to you. So to persist in prayer, to be filled with the Spirit of God, to be delivered from evil, and all these things will be added unto you, that God's will be done. Well, in this passage that we read, finally, the judge breaks and gives her what she asked for. Because he's like, if I don't give it to her, I don't even care about, again, I don't care. If the judge says, I don't care about God, I don't care about humanity, I don't even care about this woman. But I'm going to give it to her because if she doesn't stop coming to me, I'm going to snap. He may have been a narcissist all about himself, right? May have been, again, may have been a social sociopath. Doesn't care about anybody, but does care about himself. So fine, I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> we can be worn down sometimes. We persist when we want something. And again, we take that chance because someone could get angry with us. In the case of this widow, she, she needed to take that chance. But why does God, why does Jesus compare God with an unjust judge? When you first read it, you might wonder that. It's more of a contrast. Jesus is saying, if an unjust judge will will um, give you an answer. How much more will your Heavenly Father give you an answer when you pray for the Spirit, when you pray for deliverance, when you pray to God, for God's will to be done, how much more will God give to you? So it's that contrast, just like we hear when Jesus talked about prayer in um, Luke and in Matthew, he says, which one of you fathers, if your son asked for a fish, would give him a snake, or if asked for an egg, would give him a scorpion? Though you who are evil know how to give good things, how much more will your heavenly father give you give? So it's that contrast that we know how to give good things, how much more will our heavenly father give to us? Which brings us, as we draw to a close, to look at the Lord's Prayer in perspective to this passage. In the beginning of the Lord's Prayer, we give praise and adoration to God. We move into confession to forgive us as we forgive others. We then pray for God's will to be done, that we are surrendering to God's will. That persistent widow who came and asked, made a petition that God, Jesus teaches us to petition for our daily bread, for our provision, of again to be for, um, for forgiveness. And finally, to lead us not to temptation. So those elements we see in the Lord's Prayer. And finally, um, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we end it with adoration and praise once again. Matthew Henry is a New Testament scholar. And I, this quote, I love this quote, and I'm going to paraphrase it just for us here. I'm, instead of word for word, I'm going to paraphrase it. But Matthew Henry writes, we must pray and never grow weary of praying until it is swallowed up in everlasting praise. We must pray and never grow weary of praying 
until finally that petition is swallowed up in victory and we end up in everlasting praise. So as we pray, let us also give praise. As we pray our petitions, let us also give our praise to God for answered prayer. As Jesus ended the passage, ended this parable, he says, Will the Son of Man see faithfulness on earth when he returns? The passage before this parable was about Jesus' second coming. Jesus saying, well, will I find faith on the earth when I return? We are facing in our world some unprecedented, just some unprecedented moments of history. And I know unprecedented has been overused probably these past three years, but um, there's that's really the word for it, some things that we've never seen before. And of course, um, Yesterday, actually, as we were on the East Coast, as we were asleep, um, Israel and Palestine declared war. And it gave a whole new perspective to the birth, to the Bible, to the Old Testament passage. We read this. And our prayers are with Israel, and our, our prayers are also with the Palestinians that they, can, that they can find peace. What world are we facing then? When Jesus says, when I return, will I see faithfulness on the earth? There's always been evil on the earth, but I think more than ever, what we, what is evil is being called good. And what is good is being called evil. It's creating this confusion. And yet let us remain faithful to God as we go into, as we go forward, even in these unprecedented times these experiences we've never had before. I think there is tremendous fear. There's one thing to always talk about. Um, are we facing the end? And we don't know. I mean, Christians have always said that throughout the eons. But we are seeing things we we are seeing things come together between with with um, around the world, with technology. We're seeing things come together in ways we've never seen before. But let us remain faithful. That when Jesus returns, that, the, that we will be part of the faithful that is here. So, as we go from here, let us experience the power of perseverance. Jesus instructs us to persevere, to persist in prayer. Jesus also promises that God answers prayer. In the words of Matthew Henry, let us continue praying and not growing weary until those petitions are swallowed up in everlasting praise. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that you will speak to us about prayer and answer prayer. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for how you are, are near to us and that you hear our prayers, Lord. And let us continue to be encouraged to lift up Lord, to persist, and Lord, to also intercede for others, to pray for others, Lord, and know that, that your spirit also intercedes for us, Lord. Let us be encouraged to continue to persevere, knowing, Lord, that you answer prayer according to your will. And, Lord, that you answer prayer. We pray, Lord, that you will deliver us and that we will <coughs> seek you first in all things. We pray in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, at this time, we will come to our time of prayer. Um, represented by Lois Lindstrom. <laughs> Once every year, we come around to experience time. Okay, better. 
we come around to this very special day where we have the opportunity through our cards and notes to tell you how very special you are to us, how much we love you, how much we appreciate the time and effort and energy and dedication and creativity that you put into the leadership of this church. So I present this to you. <laughs> present these to you. Thank you. And with a very special thank you for choosing us to be your church family. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you very much. It is our blessing and our privilege to serve you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all. It's um obviously it's, it's humbling, it means a lot to us, but you know, we, we want to extend our thanks and gratitude as well uh, for choosing us. And I know we've seen God do some we've seen God really do some amazing things these past years. We just pray that we're doing God's will. Um this is the time we come to the Lord in prayer. Prayer request this morning, we do need to.
disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts. And lead us not to me, but deliver us from evil. For I is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, please then sing our final hymn, <coughs> number 435, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. 435. Maybe somebody else's body. <laughs> 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 